Web 3.0 has immense promise to change the future of the internet as we know it. But this landscape is constantly evolving. Every time we turn around, it seems like something else new is coming out of the scene that completely changes the game and the rules for everybody who's playing. And right now, we're experiencing another change just like this that you need to understand. It's likely going to have a huge impact on this space. And those who understand this and stay two steps ahead of the curve stand to reap the rewards of this because there's going to be lots of money-making opportunities here. So I'm going to talk about all that in this video today, what you need to understand as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about how the Web 3.0 landscape is rapidly changing. So one of the biggest themes inside the entire crypto space during, you know, 2021 was the explosion of new smart contract platforms out of the chain. We saw all these different chains competing to try to steal market share and become, you know, the leader in this space, despite, you know, Ethereum occupying that space for a really long time. So chains like Avalanche, Solana, you know, Polkadot, lots of others come out of the scene and actually capture a lot of activity, lots of applications and ecosystems come out of nowhere overnight on these platforms and also watch their token prices soar to insane valuations. Now, I expect that many of these ecosystems are going to continue to grow over time. But we saw this initial explosion that kind of came out of nowhere. And I want to talk about another explosion that's likely to happen pretty soon that's really going to change the dynamic of this. And if you understand this, then there's a ton of upside potential here. So the Ethereum ecosystem is rapidly evolving, okay? We've got the merge for Ethereum 2.0 coming out later this year, probably. But that's not really what I'm talking about in this video. What I'm actually talking about is the Layer 2 ecosystem inside of Ethereum undergoing a very similar life cycle to what we saw in 2021 with these alternative, you know, Layer 1 blockchain smart contract platforms like Avalanche, Solana, and so many more, okay? I'm gonna talk about what Layer 2s are, why you understand this, what the big financial upside is potentially, and also some new players that are coming onto the scene that you particularly want to watch out for that I never really talked about that much on my channel. So just a quick recap on what a layer two is, if you're not familiar. So basically, this is building a second layer on top of Ethereum that you know and use today and doing all your transactions there instead of on Ethereum itself, okay? So people can complain about Ethereum being too slow, too expensive to use. And that's one of the reasons we've seen a lot of these alternative layer ones pop up and get so much traction. And people think that we have to wait for Ethereum 2.0 to get here before that problem gets fixed. Well, sorry, but actually Ethereum 2.0 is not going to fix that problem. But layer twos can and they're here now. And I think that we're going to reach an inflection point with layer twos pretty soon that could cause these to absolutely take off and undergo a very similar life cycle to what we saw with some of these other chains. So the important thing to understand about layer twos is that they are inextricably linked to the Ethereum blockchain itself. So that basically means that you pay the fees for all the transactions in Ether that you can bridge on and off to the main Ethereum chain itself and that they use Ethereum's, you know, security to actually function function, okay, so, but why should you care about any of what I'm talking about? Okay, maybe you say, I've just written ETH off completely. I use this other stuff. Well, you should care for two big reasons, all right? So reason number one is that it's likely going to impact you if you're in this space and change how you actually interact with technology itself. And number two is there's likely going to be a pretty big financial upside to adopting layer two technology really early. So let's just start off with the financial upside. And then I'm actually going to talk about the other reasons why you should care and then break down uh, more about what you need to understand about the Layer 2 space and some new players later on in this video. This roughly looks like, you know, the cycles that we've seen for some of these new ecosystems that absolutely explode. Something like that happening in the Layer 2 ecosystem. Now, you might remember me saying a second ago that, you know, you pay the fees on Layer 2s with Ether itself, okay? So, like, if you're, if you're going to use an Ethereum Layer 2, you're paying gas fees in Ether. And so they're like, well, but what's that going to do to the Ethereum price? I mean, it's already got a big market cap. That's not going to move the needle that much. Well, word on the street is many of these layer twos will have tokens at some point. Okay, there's not a guarantee on that. But I personally think it makes sense because think about it. How do you incentivize somebody, you know, at a crypto native level to run this infrastructure to support the L2s? There's probably going to be some, you know, crypto native economic incentives built in here. And that's likely going to be powered by a token. So that is somewhat speculative, but I think it stands to reason. Now, how does that impact? Impact you. Well, you know, from a very simple standpoint, it's probably going to have an opportunity to look like some of these alternative layer ones where you saw these explosive price appreciation because 
you know, you're able to get on this token early before things really blew up. And they just soared to insane valuations as those networks actually gained adoption. Okay, some of that's speculative bubbles, but some of it's also real network adoption. And so think about it, you can't go back in time and buy those tokens before they came out. But what if you could get the next best thing? What if you could get something else that's hot before it blows up? Well, you might get that chance again with some layer twos. Now, another big opportunity, I've talked about some of my channel, but I want to repeat here, which is the big potential for airdrops on these layer twos. Okay, so we don't exactly know, like if a layer two decides to issue a cryptocurrency, like a, like a token, how is it going to be distributed? Is it going to be through some sort of like staking mechanism, mining, or you're going to provide liquidity to earn it? We don't know. It could also just be an airdrop. Okay. So we've seen lots of airdrops in the space from Uniswap to One Inch to ENS, lots of others. I've been the beneficiary of a lot of these airdrops, sometimes getting $10,000 or more for free, basically just for being an early adopter of the technology itself. And so, you know, you could be the beneficiary of one of these airdrops if they decide to do token distribution this way on some of these layer two scaling solutions. And let's just say that the layer twos themselves, though, like any particular layer two does not decide to issue tokens um, this way or at all, then we're still probably likely going to see certain applications do airdrops on top of these layer twos to incentivize early adopters and bootstrap those networks as well. And so how can you position yourself for this type of thing? Well, the real simple answer is just use the stuff. Okay, actually, you know, getting onto a layer two scaling solution and then using the applications and making transactions. There's no guarantee that any specific layer two or application is going to do this. But the more stuff that you use, you know, the the greater likelihood is that you would you know be a recipient of something like this. So I got lots of tutorials on my channel on how to do this, but how to actually bridge over to layer twos and use applications of those networks. And we'll be putting out more in the future. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications to find out about those videos whenever they go live. All right. So now let's talk about, you know, another reason why you need to care about this, which is likely going to change how you use the blockchain in the first place. OK, so. Uh, I expect a lot of network activity to flourish on top of these layer twos, especially as we start to see consolidation around a handful of them. That's what I think is probably going to happen. I don't think we're going to see this vast network of layer twos that all share an equal distribution. That's not typically how the world tends to play out. We're likely going to see a few winners in this space that have dominance. Okay, so we'll see. I don't, I don't know exactly which ones those are going to be. I'll show you some potential contenders here in a minute, but it's going to change how you use it because if you've done any transactions on Ethereum today or up to today, and you're going to still use EVM based applications and you're going to be on a layer two, then it, most of your activity is going to occur on that layer two itself. And you may not actually be using the direct Ethereum chain itself. And so if you're, you know, getting onto any of these platforms through a cryptocurrency exchange, we're likely going to see a uh, wide support of these layer twos from cryptocurrency exchanges. So like you're depositing and withdrawing directly this layer two, you're not going down to Ethereum and then like bridging up with some other, you know, decentralized <laughs> air quotes bridge. You're just doing what you would do now, but instead of like getting on and off of ETH, ETH itself, like you may not ever even touch it. You may just be on these layer twos. All right. And so let's get a little deeper look at this L2 landscape. I say L2, that's the same thing as being layer two. We can look at L2B.com. Okay. And talk about what you want to watch out for and actually kind of take a look at some of the data in the space. So basically, you can see all the different chains here. Uh, I say chains. These are just layer twos. We kind of treat them like blockchains in and of themselves, even though they are derived from Ethereum security. And you can see different categories here. Okay, so you see optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, and Validium. Okay, so optimistic rollups are definitely one of the first uh, ones to gain a lot of traction. Okay, ZK rollups is another one that's gaining steam. And also Validium is one that I want to talk about uh, in a minute because I haven't covered it as much on my channel if you've been subscribing and watching these videos. So basically, I'm not going to get into the weeds on how each of these layer twos work. You can go uh, onto l2beat.com or maybe I'll make a different video about that. But basically, what you want to understand is these are gaining so much traction because in many cases, you can just take an application and port it over to the layer two without that many code changes. And you'll see different types of layer twos here, you know, universal versus like tokens, NFTs or exchanges. I'm most excited about universal layer twos because they're basically just blank slates where developers can build whatever application they want to. And in many cases, they can take existing applications and just move them there. And that causes these ecosystems to grow really fast. So in the optimistic rollups category, you definitely want to pay out attention to Arbitrum and Optimism, two big leaders in the space. Okay, there's some trade-offs in how optimistic rollups, uh, you know, work in terms of the withdrawal time and how they actually function. Okay, um, ZK rollups is a big, another uh, big category, uh, definitely a major player in this space in terms of general purpose rollups is ZK Sync. 
definitely want to keep an eye on. ZK Rollups have a big benefit uh, in basically using advanced cryptography to minimize trust assumptions, uh, you know, a, a little bit differently than optimistic rollups do. But another big player that I want to talk about is definitely StarkNet, okay? Uh, that's, you know, powering lots of different things in this list. Okay, you see this stuff like... Uh, uh, Immutable X or Diversify, if you hover over this, you can see that it's built with Stark X, okay? So StarkNet is a huge player in the space that's rapidly gaining attention and has a lot of stuff on its roadmap for sure. And we're starting to see more and more uh, adoption of, you know, Validium-style rollups. And with this type of adoption, uh, this is something to also greatly pay attention to, okay? So, you know, the big categories to pay attention to are definitely going to be optimistic rollups, ZK rollups, and then also Validiums, and the major players who are gaining traction there. So, you know, we don't exactly know who the winners are going to be in this space. There's a ton of strong contenders. Ultimately, the market's going to decide, you know, what networks can get adoption, which ones can get traction, and which one at the end of the day do the users actually want to spend most of their time on. Because again, you have to understand network effect is critical. You Like, think about it in terms of a social network. You don't want to get on a app like Facebook and not be able to like talk to anybody or have friends or, you know, make connections. That's the idea of a network effect. You don't want to get on amazon.com and only have 10 different products to buy. You want a rich ecosystem of merchants where you can buy everything, you know, the everything store. That's the idea of network effect. And so that's the type of thing you have to replicate on a winning blockchain. You want to get on somewhere where you can swap tokens, you know, you know, get yields, buy NFTs, trade them on a marketplace, do everything that you can currently do on a blockchain, but also support scalability to bring in all these new use cases that we have yet to untap. And this is the type of thing we're likely to see play out, you know, in the coming months and years with this technology. And you can see that we're definitely making the move in the right direction on this. You can look at the TVL uh, for these layer twos over the past, you know, year and actually look at the max growth here. So one quick thing to understand here, this is total value locked in the network, and it's kind of showing you uh, what the adoption looks like. Now, total value locked is not a perfect metric because basically it means that uh, how much cryptocurrency is stored on top of these. And as cryptocurrency prices go up and down, so will this graph. Okay, but if you actually look at it in ETH terms, um, you know, how much ETH is secured on the network, not US dollar terms, the trend is still increasing. Okay, and we've seen it have these kind of big jumps on the way. And uh, we're sort of seeing this steady, uh, you know, growth right here that with a lot of the big, you know, upgrades that are coming out for all these ecosystems, again, all these ecosystems are working on really just taking everything to the next level. As soon as we see that stuff happen, and we see more and more adoption, we're going to probably see this absolutely explode. And if you're staying two steps ahead of this, then there's likely going to be a ton of upside in terms of any of these layer twos issuing tokens, you know, the, the option to buy these at low prices before they just absolutely explode in value, or to be the beneficiary of airdrops from the layer twos themselves or through applications on the network, okay? And then also just being two steps ahead of the game and understanding the technology is a huge value in and of itself. Because at the end of the day, that's what I'm here for on this channel is to help you understand this, that you can accomplish your goals, whatever it is in blockchain, whether it's to, you know, become a blockchain developer, whether it's to get a job in the blockchain industry, which, you know, actually learning to code gives you a massive advantage to that. I just got a testimonial from somebody the other day saying that they got a business job uh, but, you know, understanding solidity, understanding how to code basically landed them that job in the first place and that they learned that through watching this channel, going through the trainings. And so that's ultimately what I'm here for. So hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you're as fast and with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, Maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.